And we're back with some more Western Michigan Broncos franchise mode in FHM 9. And in this one, we are going to get through the verbal commitment stage of year number six. Something I'm noticing right off the bat, Michael Genovese, that name sounds familiar. Was he not? Yeah, he was a verbal commitment for us two years ago. Oh, he was that, he was one of those players who just disappeared. <laughs> he, he was one of those players who just disappeared off of our draft list from the National Signing Day stage. I thought something weird was happening with that. So it just, it literally just took them out of, it, it took him and then I believe it was a goaltender, Kote, was taken out of National Signing Day. Cause I saw he wasn't on my unsigned page, but for some reason, Michael Genovese has gone back into verbal commitments. That's weird, that's, that is so strange. <laughs> Like, like, why, why was he removed from National Signing Day? That's what I want to know. So he was, he was actually a verbal commitment of ours. We drafted him during National Signing Day. And then for some reason, his name just flies off the board and disappears. And, and, and he goes right back into verbal commitments for whatever reason. That is so weird. I, I, I gotta say, I've been finding bugs left and right here in the NCAA <laughs> GM mode, and I'm not even trying to. So that's, uh, yeah, that is a bit off-putting. Same for, the same for Daniel Farky Harris. I remember he was, this guy, along with Genovese, was in the National Signing Day this, this past year, and now he's here? <laughs> that's a big problem. That is a big problem. And Kote is here too. Alexis Kote. I was trying, I was trying to get him in the National Signing Day. It even said he joined my team. He said, it said, congratulations. Here you go. He's, he's joined your prospects list. But no, he, along with these guys, go back into the verbal commitment stage. Is, like, is that possible? Is, is that supposed to happen? I don't think so. So I wonder what's going to happen if we take Genovese again in the verbal commitments. Like, is, is that going to list a second verbal commitments draft under him? Or is it just going to replace this one? Or is it just going to crash all together? because <laughs> it doesn't know what to do I, I wouldn't be surprised at any of those outcomes and it does seem that we have the first nomination here so we may as well take genovese and see what happens uh okay he's agreed to join you and will be part of your team next season pending academic eligibility this is verbal commitments though actually let's let's check his yeah it adds a second verbal commitments draft except two years later in round one, first overall. Okay, we got Dan Meredith as well at second overall. And he, oh, and he was one of the verbal commitments too from 2026. Is this whole, hold on. Are all the players in this verbal commitment stage previously? Oh my God, they are. <laughs> this dude, this dude went through two verbal commitments. The first time in 2025 in round 12. And then the second time in 2027, now again in 2028. What is going on here? <laughs> Okay, Harry Gavin, this is his first verbal commitment stage at 15 years of age. But I, I wonder, what if I took out, what if I sorted out guys who are 15? So a minimum age of 16. Is this, yeah, it seems like for a lot of players who aren't 15, this isn't their first verbal commitments draft. Now, my question is, can you drop out of a national signing day draft in order to go back into the verbal commitments the year after? Like, is that possible? Because I think I've seen some players decline to sign with any team because they weren't offered a sponsor or a scholarship by uh, their their preferred team, and they just went back right back into verbal commitments. But what I'm trying to figure out is: are all these players back in verbal commitments because a team tried to pick them during the national signing day, and it, the, their name just disappeared off the board like like nothing had happened? Because that's that's what that's exactly what happened with Kote. Farke Harrison and and Genovese. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now is, is if the same thing happened for some of the computers. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have any way of determining that because I because if that happens, the it won't show their name on the bottom and it won't show that they were drafted by anybody. So I, I have no way of telling that. Yep. So Alexis Kotek, he goes back into verbal commitments and this time RPI selects him at 13. We got him two years ago, round four at 192. That just seems so weird to me. Like, I, I even, I tried picking them. It said, congratulations, he will be on your roster next year. And then, poof, he's gone. I mean, a few episodes ago, we had the crashes during the National Signing Day. And then we had the uh, the Phantom Games during the NCAA playoffs. And now here, we discover that there are players mysteriously disappearing from, 
from National Signing Day and going back into verbal commitments. You got to admit, that is very strange. And up there goes Farkey Harson this time <laughs> to Yale in the second round during verbal commitments. That is his third verbal commitments draft. So we'll see if he, <laughs> for some reason, re-enters next year. And that is it for the verbal commitment stage. I just went through it pretty quickly. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at the next National Signing Day. To see if any players just disappear on us like they did, like they did last episode. I, either they're displaying the wrong message there, or something just completely screws up. That makes it so that they re-enter verbal commitments and, and acts like the pick didn't even exist. And it's not like any other team gets them either. They just straight up go right back to the verbal commitment stage. It's so weird. Anyway, let's get through the rest of the season and hopefully we'll be able to maintain our current pace. Currently 16-2, and two, which for me was honestly a surprise for this team because we're not nearly as talented as last year on paper anyway. But I, I think it's that first line. I really think that it's that first line of Goisik. Elfring and Risto, two of which are graduating this year, and the other might be headed to the NHL next year. So, no, in fact, not might, will. He he will be in the NHL next year, no doubt about it. Like, look at these ratings. <laughs> there, there's no doubt in my mind he is going to the NHL next year, especially being the first overall pick, right? So if there's any year for us to get it done, it is definitely this year. This, this year has to be it. <laughs> if we go into next season and we have... A roster full of, you know, three-star players or below. I, I, I'm not sure how next season is going to go. Oh, no. Kroll out with a major injury indefinitely. That is a three-star defenseman that we are losing. Oh, boy. That's, that's fun. Yeah, so we're down to four defensemen, basically, for the rest of the season here. Because that, that's definitely, that's got to be... That, that's got to be through the NCAA tournament. Indefinite is no shorter than like four months in this game, right? Yeah, it doesn't even say duration on here. It just says indefinite on the injury message. I just looked up the length of this injury on Google. It says on average between six and nine months. So that's, yeah. <laughs> he might even be done up until before next season starts. Although he's, to be fair, he's not going to be here next year. He's a senior, but still that's, uh, yeah, that's a bad, bad injury. For him and for the team. And of course, it doesn't help right now that one of our best players, Elfring, is out on international duty. And we've had games on the schedule since he went to uh, wh whatever international game is going on right now. All right, so we're on March 1st now. I, this is another thing I've noticed about <laughs> the NCAA. It seems to follow the exact same schedule year after year, like after year number three, maybe year number two. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe it just follows the same schedule every year, including year number one and two. Because I swear we have faced Miami for the last two games every single season so far. <laughs> I, I am pretty sure that is what's happening here. So let's skip ahead to the award nominees. Then we'll check out the stats for the end of the season. And then we'll jump into the NCAA tournament. We finished 28-5-1 and one with 57 points. So I believe, yeah, that ties last season for the, <laughs> for the same amount of points. I honestly did not expect that. Based on the roster we had last year, and compared to this year's roster, it's not nearly as... I mean, it's still talented, don't get me wrong, but we don't have as much depth this year, and we definitely had a lot more star power last year, so I didn't, I didn't think we'd be this good. But still, it's, a, it's definitely welcome. I'm not going to... Uh, complain about that my worry though is next year that's <laughs> that's when we're really gonna have to watch out stats for forwards elfring with 50 points in 32 games played my goodness that's gotta that's gotta be the highest point total in a single season we've seen so far out of any player in this series that is definitely very impressive he, he's going to the nhl next year no doubt about it like we're gonna have to prepare ourselves to be doug elfring -less <laughs> next year he is no doubt going to be snatched up by calgary then you have Goisik with 37 points in 30 games, Brooks with 33, Grenier and Risto with 27, 24 for Lundberg, 23 for Sinkinen, 18 for Smith, 15 for Person, 14 for Elliott, 11 for Smith, 10 for Wallace, 5 for Decker, 4 for Vardy, and 3 for Doucette and Douglas. On defense, you have Stenger with 26 points, 21 for Biktimirov, 19 for Zap, Raddy, and Dupuis. 12 for Kane and 11 for Hartfell. And as a reminder, Hartfell, Ratty, and Zap are actually all natural forwards. So uh, we have three forwards playing on D heading into the playoffs. I, I don't know how to feel about that. And in goal, you have Dix in 19 games played with an 899 save percentage and Howitt in 16 games played with the 896. So 
definitely going to have to rely on our offense going into the playoffs here, <laughs> particularly Mr. Doug Elfring. If that first line doesn't produce, we're done for, <laughs> basically, is, is what's happening here. Honestly, I, I don't know how we were that good <laughs> during the regular season. I guess it was our goal score. Yeah, 154 goals for. Goals for per game, yeah. I mean, 4.5 in 34 games played first in the league even goals against per game was great 2.18 we were ninth in the league so curious as to how low our goaltenders save percentages are yeah our goals against per game wasn't all that bad in fact it was pretty good so i guess we just didn't let up a whole lot of shots that might be our defense then that's doing all the work there yeah i mean look at our <laughs> look at our shots against per game that explains it that definitely explains it 21.03 shots against per game on average with an average shots four per game of 44.5. That would explain why we won so much. And it definitely helps that we were tied for first in faceoffs as well with a 55.7 power play. I mean, what can I really say about that at this point? We're <laughs> I'm just used to the power play being bad in this GM mode, I suppose. 16.7, 40th in the league. Penalty kill, all right, that's better. 83.3, 19th in the league. Still, it, it does seem like the strength of this team lies within puck possession, getting pucks on nets, and being able to defend well. If the puck ever gets past the defense, then the goaltender is going to have a hard time of it. So that's why the loss of Kroll was so bad, and he's still marked as indefinite. Wow, that must be a long one. Like that, he's he might be out until like after next season starts. And again, he, he's not going to be here next season, but still, that's that's rough. Like he's already been injured a solid two months so far still indefinite wow and here we go we have the start of the ncaa tournament well more specifically the divisional playoffs we are starting against nebraska omaha who were 6 25 and 3 so i mean yeah this <laughs> oh dear that is kind of brutal i mean i know we're not going to be as good next year as we are now but uh i i don't think even we'll be this bad that is, yeah, that's rough. So if, if we lose this, I, I might just have to resign because that, that would be the embarrassment of the century right there. I mean, 28, five and one to six, 25 and three. Here we go. First game of the divisional playoffs against Nebraska, Omaha, now underway. And there's the first goal of the game. Doug Elfring with a goal from Risto and Sinkinen. We're up one nothing. And there's another one. Biktimirov with the goal from Grenier and Sinkinen. We're up by two. Halfway through first. And there's another one. Mark Brooks from Hartfell and Stenger up by three. And there's another one. Sinkinen from Hartfell up by four. And, wow, there's another. <laughs> I almost feel bad. Uh, <laughs> Mason Stenger with the goal from Biktimirov and Elfring. We're up by five in the first period. And heading in second now. I, at this point, the only question is, what's the final score going to be? <laughs> Grenier from Risto and Ratty early in the second period to make it 6-0, 7-0, sinking in from Hartfell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Lundberg <laughs> from Grenier and Zap. How far is this going to go? How far is this going to go? So they managed to get through the period without getting scored on again, but 8-0 heading into the third ouch <laughs> all right so they managed to stop the bleeding after that they they didn't give up any more goals after that but wow eight to nothing throttling of nebraska omaha shots were 50 to 13 in favor of your western michigan broncos three stars of the game sinking in with the four point performance heart fell with three assists and aristo with two here we go game against colorado college they are i forgot to look at the record 27 six and one this should be an interesting one we're almost tied with them in terms of our record we are just one win off of them this should be much much more competitive here here we go game underway and the first has gone by no scoring second period underway there's the first goal of the game grenier from smith and dupuy up by one there's another one smith from grenier and lundberg up by two and there's another mason stenger from lundberg and grenier up by three and there's their first goal Frieden with the goal Makes it three to one. We're still early in the second. We've had a lot of stoppages here so far. A lot of penalties too. There's a goal for LeBlanc. Back within one now. Late in the second period. Heading into the third period. Come on, guys. Get it done. There's a goal for Grenier, I believe it was. <laughs> I, I clicked play too fast, but that was, I believe, Grenier with the goal. Up by two once again. There's another one. Brett Elliott from Biktimirov and Grenier. Makes it five to two, and we win this game by the same score. Shots for 36 to 24 in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. Three stars of the game, Grenier, Smith, and Lundberg. And I believe that brings us into the finals against the Denver Pioneers. So this is for a spot in the NCAA tournament. Here we go. Gam against the Denver Pioneers. 
now underway. And no goals in the first. Second consecutive game of no scoring in the first period. Second period underway. And there's a goal for Denver. Dixon Grayson with the goal to give them the 1-0 lead. And there's a goal for us. Tate and Ratty with the game time goal from Elfring and Goisik. And we're headed into the third period tied at one. Come on, boys. It's a close game. There you go. Doug Elfring with the goal from Wallace and Brooks. Makes it 2-1. to one. Come on, Western Michigan. Come on, Western Michigan. Yeah, there it is. We win the NCHC championship and we are officially moving on to the NCAA tournament. Shots were 32 to 20 in favor of Western Michigan Broncos. Three stars of the game, Elfring, McMorrow, and Brooks. So it looks like we'll be facing Cornell in the first round of the NCAA tournament. All right, here we go. Phantom game against Cornell underway. And there's a goal for Cornell. Luke Gallo with the goal. And there's another one, Charlie Major. And the first period, they're up by two. In the second now, Ropa Tumioksa with the goal for Cornell puts them up 3-0. Now, I, I, honestly, I'm not invested in this game because I, I know it, it literally does not matter because <laughs> because this is not the one that counts. There's a goal for Ratty from Elfring and Goisik, but it's, it's the second one that matters based on what we've seen from years past. So uh, there's another goal for Cornell, Spaganulo, and that is the end of that game. But once again, doesn't exactly matter as there's another game right after it. Shots were 46 to 28 in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. So we actually dominated on the shots, but they got the goals. Three stars of the game, Spaganuolo, McCarty, and Howard. All right, here's the real game against Cornell. So going into it once again, first period underway. And there's a goal for Cornell. Etheridge with the goal, puts them up one nothing midway through the first period come on western michigan oh no mason stenger with a first degree mcl spray <laughs> not a good one there not a good one is isn't he like yeah it was him and kroll who are our best defensemen going into this season and now we lost both of them to long-term injuries <laughs> oh man that's not good that's not good there's a goal for lemberg from kane and smith so we're tied but bef right before the second period as well so that's a, that is a big goal swings the momentum into our favor heading in the second period here come on guys come on guys oh man no score in the second period heading to the third still tied at one there you go grania with the goal from ratty and Doucette. we're up by one hold the lead there it is elfring from goisik and smith up by two there it is person with the goal from Goisik and Zap, we're up by three. Hold on, Spagnuolo with the goal for Cornell. But there's a goal for us, Spencer Smith from Lundberg and Person. We appear to have this game in the bag, and yes, indeed, we win by the score of five to two. The bug that is the Phantom game saves us from elimination, and we move on in the tournament. So uh, that, that's too bad for Cornell, but uh, appears to be the way this game operates right now. So I'll take it. I mean, I. Uh, Obviously, if we win the tournament this year, we're going to have to put an asterisk on our tournament win for sure. But still, you know, I guess we're not the only team you could do that for. Uh, okay, so that first degree MCL sprain isn't as bad as I thought it would be only one or two weeks. But then again, the NCAA tournament isn't any longer than I would say like three weeks. So he's missing a good chunk of time there. And the second round of the NCAA tournament, we'll be facing the American International Yellow Jackets. They are 23, 8, and 3 on the regular season, compared to our 28, 5, and 1. Not enough skaters? Uh, oh, right, because we had an injury on defense. So I need to switch someone to D. Either that or I need, <laughs> I need to get a walk on, but I would rather not do that. I guess I'll just switch Douglas to D for the time being. All right, here we go. Game against American International underway no goals in the first pretty uneventful as a whole actually only one penalty on our side so second period time and there's a goal for them o'keefe with a goal puts them up one nothing late in the second period so heading into the locker room down by one heading into the third oh alexi sinking in with the goal with 140 remaining from brooks and grenier to get the game tied at one very late in the third period and we are headed to overtime against American International. Come on, boys. Get the win. There it is. Brooks with the overtime goal to send us to the Frozen Four once again. Shots were 44 to 20 in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. Three stars of the game, D'Orazio, O'Keefe, and Brooks. And here are the Frozen Four. You have Bentley, Bentley Falcons. I believe they were the champion a couple of years ago. Last year was Colgate. Then you have the Army Black Knights. And we are facing the UMass Lowell Riverhawks, who are 26, 
seven and three on the regular season. All right, here we go. Game against the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. And that was a goal for us. Lundberg with a goal from Wallace and Person up by one. And second period time, there's another one. Doug Elfring from Goisik makes it two nothing. Come on, guys. Oh, Jasser with a goal makes it two to one. Their first goal of the game. And there you go. A goal with three seconds left from Brett Elliott from Grenier and Risto gives us the momentum heading into the third period. That is a huge goal. Come on, oh boy. Cal Murphy with a goal, makes it 3-2. And that is the end of the game against UMass Lowell. We are advancing to the finals. Very nicely done. Shots were 42 to 18 in favor of Western Michigan Broncos. We outshoot basically every team by, it seems like more than double. And obviously that's reflected in our team stats during the regular season. So it shouldn't come as any surprise here really, but still like the, the caliber of the teams that we're doing it against, like UMass Lowell, they weren't any you know, they weren't pushovers during the regular season, 26, 7, and 3, and we're still doing that to them. I mean, this this team's pretty insane, actually, when it comes to just getting the puck on net and, and being able to defend, not even letting them get into our zone too often. That's that's actually really impressive. I, I was not expecting this. And here we are in the finals against the Army Black Knights who are 23, 6, and 5 on the regular season. So the good news is that Mason Stender has actually come back from his injury. So we won't have to roll with <laughs> Douglas on the back end now. So here we go. Final game of the NCAA tournament. Or what I presume to be the final game anyway. Maybe, who knows? Maybe there's a phantom game later on. But presumably the final game of the NCAA tournament against the Army Black Knights. Here we go. Game is underway. Come on, Western Michigan. And no scoring in the first period once again. And they are on the power play heading into the second period. So not a good way to start out. But we're going to have to deal with it. Come on, guys. There it is. Goal by Mark Brooks from Person and Stender. We're up by one. And we're up by two. Spencer Smith with the goal unassisted. Come on. Head into the locker room. Yes. All right. We're up by two. Headed into the third period. This is it. Come on, guys. Hold the lead. Yeah, Brett Elliott with the goal from Elfring and Smith. Up 3-0 midway through the third period. And we look to have the championship in the bag. And we win the NCAA championship for Western Michigan. Very nicely done, boys. Shots at 39-13. to 13. <laughs> In favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. This team is really just so good at keeping up the pressure, it seems. Three stars of the game, Smith, Elliott, and Person. And it almost makes me wonder why we couldn't do that last season. I mean, we were good last season, don't get me wrong, we were really good, but we're consistently dominating teams that have, we have no business dominating. <laughs> it's, it's so, I mean, this team is very, very good. Although, to be fair, to be fair, we did not have the man, the myth, the legend, Doug Elfring, on our team last year. And it doesn't seem we're going to have him next year either, but still... Like, he, he did phenomenal for us in the time that we've had him. Let's check out the stats for the playoffs. He had four points in five games, so he wasn't even that present in the NCAA tournament. But he did, I know for a fact, he chipped in shot-wise. Yeah, 22 shots led the team. And then honestly, his defense isn't too bad either, so it wouldn't surprise me if he had a good defensive grade. Yeah, 79 defensive grade. Oh, yeah, he, he contributed. As long as you're doing something, I, I don't care what you're doing. You could be the best goal scorer on the team. And if you're not scoring goals, but you're playing great defense, I don't care, right? As long as someone's doing the goal scoring, as long as someone's playing defense. But he played phenomenal defensively and got four points in five games played. So I, I really cannot complain with him at all. Now, goalie stats, this should be interesting. How it with five games played in the playoffs the 9-11 save percentage obviously that doesn't count the what's it called the nchc playoffs but still a pretty solid performance out of how it's for the ncaa tournament and there it is your western michigan broncos have won the ncaa tournament of course probably put an asterisk on it just given that we lost the first game against cornell but you know it's, it's not like that was in my control anyway I, obviously i would have liked to win the first game but you know what can you do <laughs> and we have the awards ceremony for the hockey humanitarian award you have jack hamilton for the hobie baker you have brendan mcmorrow who was with why do i have to go into career stats to check this denver pioneers and the playoff mvp is tayden ratty of your western michigan broncos only three points in five games played and he was the playoff mvp really he must have had a game winning goal in there and the mike richter award for the best goalie you have julian letourneau i don't know if that was pronounced correctly for forgive my french but yeah 928 save percentage and four shutouts in 28 games played gm of the year you have ryan duroche with colorado college with 27 wins and the best coach goes to landon applegate also of colorado 
Oh boy, we have an off ice incident during the off season. Bruce Wallace involved with Tate and Ratty. See? Ooh, that's a five. Not great. I mean, are they seniors? Wallace and Ratty? Ratty's a junior. Wallace is. Where's Wallace? Freshman. Ooh, a bit of a problem. But I'll leave it for now. I'll see if they sort it out over the offseason. If not, then I might have to get rid of one of them. And here we go. Season summary. Unfortunately, <laughs> did not get that elusive manager of the year. But we did get every other positive category. We reached the playoffs, winning season, winning percentage of 600 or better, finished first, reached the finals, and won the championship for a total season score of 45, bringing our total career score to 189. Nine available points. I'm going to put them into discipline and player management, I think. Oh boy, we're down to quiet hostility. They're down to a four now with Wallace and Rowdy, but I don't want this going on for too long here. And here we go. Hockey Hall of Fame inductions. We have Yarmir Yager, Joe Thornton, Eric Stahl, and Jonathan Quick all into the Hockey Hall of Fame. All right, so we're at the start of the preseason of year number seven. Philip Potit is academically ineligible. I don't recognize that name. He has a half star potential. Okay, I don't, I don't really care what happens with you, but sure, he's not willing to register. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so now that we are at the preseason, let's see what our roster is looking like. Elfring is still here? Really? I was very sure he was gonna, he was gonna just bolt to Calgary. He's still here. Wow, I'm genuinely shocked. Like these are second line NHL caliber numbers, minimum second line. This he could very well be first line NHL already. Usually, if an NHL team was gonna sign a player, they would have done it by now. I think Elfring's here to stay for this year. Wow, like he was the first overall pick two years ago, and yet he's still here. That that is genuinely shocking. <laughs> Oh, well, looks like we got another year with them. I mean, I'm certainly not complaining. I just, I'm, I'm very, I, I thought for sure Calgary was going to sign him. It appears not, though. So you got him along with Pega Magabo and Brooks as what looks to be our first line this year. We are hurting for depth now, unfortunately, though. Yeah, big time hurting for depth. Ouch. Let's take a look at our defense. Yeah, we have three, three star defensemen, two of which are natural forwards <laughs> in Ratty and Zap. This will certainly be a very interesting season. At forward, you have Elfring, Pegamagabo, Brooks, Semoleski, and Elliott. Then you drop down to Wallace, O'Kanahi, and then it really drops off with Decker, Smith, Vardy, Coverdale, Bowie, McMahon, and Mullins. So, yeah, this will... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know I said this last season about uh, last year's team, which performed beyond my wildest expectations, but I, I genuinely can, <laughs> cannot see this team... Uh, performing as well as last year's team did. But once again, I guess I guess you never know until we actually get through it. So I think we'll stop it here. Hopefully we can at the very least give last year's team a good run for its money. And so begins our quest to repeat as the NCAA tournament champions. See you guys in the next one.